Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so this is my first video of 2024 and the most exciting thing for me is we have changed names. Okay, so last year, if you were tuned in, you knew me as Kitchen Talk and this year I am raising health. Okay, raising health with Colleen the Coach. So I'm super excited. We've got a whole lot of brilliant plans um, in the bag for Colleen the Coach this year. And I'm here to teach you guys how to eat right for life. And my mission is to make sure that while we're doing all of that, we are eating food that we can trust. Okay, so super, super important. So let me just get the pleasantries out the way and say happy, happy, happy 2024, guys. I know that 2023 was a really tough year for a lot of people. And it seems to be in absolute name and chaos. And I just hope through this channel, I can just bring a little bit of sunshine into your life every week. Going into 2024, you know, I'm going to be right here um, trying to teach you how to eat right for life. And I really and truly hope that you enjoy this journey um, that we can take together. So back to this week. So here in Connecticut, it has been freezing. Well, by my standards anyway, it's been freezing. According to everyone, it's been super mild. Um, this is my second winter and I can tell you, but you can see from out there in the sunshine, um, it is beautiful, but you open that door and it's like walking into a fridge. I kid you not, it is freezing. But um, best I stop complaining about that. <laughs> but I must say, I do love it. I really, really do love it. We even had a little bit of snow the other day and um, it was snow. It was only about that deep, but it was snow. So I'm really enjoying the winter and I'm just taking this time to really get stuck in. Like I'm busy writing an ebook for you guys. We're launching the new website, Colleen the Coach, um, in the next couple of days. The YouTube channel, it has got a whole new team behind it. And we've got some really cool girls um, who are going to be working behind the scenes to make sure that I can deliver this message to you guys and really connect well. So let me get started. Started. Okay, so the holidays are over, it's back to reality, and a lot of people, my clients in particular, and I must say even myself a little bit, um, we're all feeling a little bit, you know, we could shed a few pounds, and we perhaps sitting back considering what shall we do this year, how can we get back, back to our pre-holiday weight, and I am going to speak to you today about intermittent fasting, because I really do believe that intermittent fasting is one of the most incredible, powerful tools. And the benefits that come with intermittent fasting are so vast. But so, I would highly recommend looking at intermittent fasting. I do this literally on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm really doing some extreme fasting so that I can just get myself back on track and then just ease myself back in for a couple of days. And so the cycle begins. That works for me. But let's say you're a complete nut to beginner and you want to start intermittent fasting, and you're not quite sure where to start, and perhaps you're feeling a little bit anxious, you know what is really surprising is how many people live in fear of hunger. They are so actually petrified of a hunger pain. And it's quite bizarre because, I mean, I've never really heard of anyone dying of a hunger pain, you know, but some people, I think, really do believe that, you know, feeling hungry is... Um, it's such a discomfort for them that they need to eat. So really what happens when that takes place is that you're never really understanding what true hunger feels like. So you end up just eating the whole time based off your senses. So, oh, you're feeling emotional. Perhaps it's that time of the month or whatever. You're feeling emotional. So you go and comfort eat. You walk past the bakery. How many times? I don't even enjoy eating bread. But when I walk past the bakery and I smell the bread, I literally have my face up against the window, you know? I mean, it's crazy what the smells do for us, you know? Yeah, so it's all these, you know, even just feelings like, I mean, it was crazy over the holidays. Um, I ordered a whole lot of South African treats off Amazon. These are treats I wouldn't even buy at home back in South Africa. Wouldn't, I bought flings, I bought Oma's rusks. 
um trust me the list was like was nice little box full of South African things but you know what I did it because I wanted to feel like I wanted to feel home I wanted to feel South Africa I wanted to and let me tell you it didn't well none of it re I even got salty cracks if you're from South Africa and you're listening to this you'll you you will relate to what I'm saying so you know that's Oh, I've got Mrs. Bolt as well. Okay, I'm going to stop. Okay, but you know, this is this is just an example like of, of me, you know, opening it up, tasting it, smelling it, just, oh, anyway, so just going back to um, what I was saying. So basically, we forget what real hunger feels like because we are so busy indulging ourselves with our senses. Okay, so now we've decided we want to start the, the, the intermittent fasting. You've realized and you aren't going to die if you have a little hunger pang. It's okay to feel a little bit hungry. It's a very temporary situation. And you know what? You're going to get into the swing of things. So I want to just give you one quick little example. So think about your pets. So you feed your pets every day, say 5 p.m. I kid you not. So last year we were looking after... Um, um, Jim's daughter's dog for her while she was away and I, was, I see this dog you know all day long this dog would just kind of line its basket do its thing and this dog used to get fed every night at five by me and eventually I would come down to the kitchen like around four five o'clock to you know get sorted out what I need to do and if it was before feeding time this dog would go mental like this she was like you know all over the place so eventually I had to say to Jim, you know, will you feed her at six o'clock when you get home? Because when she thinks it's feeding time at five o'clock, she makes my life um, impossible for, for, you know, the even the 30 minutes building up to it. So it's the same thing with intermittent fasting, you know, like your body like me. I know on a certain day, whatever my time is, literally about an hour before I start going, hmm, you know. I'm, I'm getting ready now. I'm starting to, to feel for this. And this is exactly what it will be like for you. I say to everybody, all my clients, you know, when once you get fasting fit, you don't have to think about it again. It just Your body just automatically goes into a fasting state. And um, it's not a big deal. But guys, now we'll talk about how do we get you into a state where you don't have to worry about hunger pains and anxiety and all those things. Okay, so today I'm going to give you seven tips on how you can overcome the hunger pangs and get yourself fasting fit. So my, my very first go-to thing ever is point number one, which is low-carb diet. Seriously, you, you embark on a low-carb diet, you are literally getting all the breads out, your, out of your diet, all the, the pastas, the cakes, all that stuff goes because now you are on a low carb diet and also you cannot use intermittent fasting you shouldn't be abusing intermittent fasting by eating still eating junk food so you've got to be you know if you're going to be embarking on the intermittent fasting journey which i highly recommend just cut back go into low carb eating look at your your day today look at the times that you have selected and plan those meals but make sure it's low carb as in the beginning you know you will be going through a few detox symptoms because you'll be withdrawing from sugar etc etc but i promise you now the benefits will, will be incredible you will not be sorry i can assure you of that okay so that's low carb and high fat what i recommend for the high fat guys is to get in, get your I, oh my clients i insist half an avocado a day um i actually just took this out the fridge i wanted to show you um, okay, I'm not going to look this up. I'm going to destroy everything with water. But these are my avocados that I bought earlier this week. And all you do with these avocados now is you put them into this bowl, into some water, bang, into the fridge. And I can tell you these avocados, I can tell you right now, these avocados are perfect. This for some, I found this on TikTok. <laughs> okay, so it works, guys. Get your avo in. Half an avo a day, low carb diet. Get your nuts and your seeds and, you know, get your good, healthy portion of protein in as well. Okay, so this is super, super important. So listen, so now that's point number one. Point number two, okay. My point number two, for two weeks, I recommend you go on so low-carb diet and don't worry about intermittent fasting for the first two weeks. Rather get onto the low-carb diet, 
get through some of the withdrawals, the sugar withdrawals, etc. You're also gonna you're also gonna start feeling a lot better. So that once you hit week three, okay, then you can implement your intermittent fasting times. So you'll even find with uh, with with doing the low carb eating and making sure that you are getting like serious nutrients into your diet. Guys, I mentioned that earlier. Remember point one, like you cannot abuse intermittent fasting. You cannot be doing takeouts. If you want to do intermittent fasting, you need to eat good, healthy food, food that you can trust. When in doubt, go without. That's what I always say. If you're going, oh, you know, should I be eating this? Chances are you shouldn't be. So, okay. So we've said go back. So point number two, we are going to start with your um, low-carb diet and getting your good, healthy fats in. And you aren't going to intermittent fast. You're going to just slow it down. You're going to start intermittent fasting on weeks. Okay. So that's a really nice way to um, start with your intermittent fasting because you'll also relax around what you're doing as well. You know, you're going to just deal with one thing at a time and just start your low-carb eating plan. Okay, so a really important, I group these three together, but it's like really super important, guys. You've got to try your best to reduce your stress. I know, it's hectic out there. It's mayhem. Everywhere you turn, something is going on. So stress, the stress levels are crazy, okay? So try and do your very best to manage your stress. Go for a walk, do something. You know, I've got a trampoline. And when I feel like, oh my goodness, I'm not coping, I just go onto the trampoline, even if I just jump a hundred times, you know, and I jump a hundred times, 50 times, whatever, shake it off, you know, and I feel a little bit better thereafter. So just find something that works for you, you know, take five minutes to breathe, do whatever, but find a way to reduce your stress. And super, super important, you really need to get your sleep in. I mean, I am the world's worst. <laughs> I shouldn't be preaching this because I really have to work so super hard to manage healthy sleeping pattern for myself. So I really and truly encourage you to try and get your sleep routine um, organized. You know, try and get to sleep lights out, depending on what time you need to get up in the morning. But try and make sure that you've got a good eight hours. You know, perhaps throw in an extra 40 hours just for snoozing and relaxing as well. But get the sleep in. Okay, the third one on point number three is alcohol. Reduce your alcohol intake. It's really hard, guys, when you're trying to intermittent fast and you're drinking a few glasses of wine every evening. The next day is going to be hard. And if you're not used to intermittent fasting, I can assure you, you are setting yourself up for a disaster. So if you're very serious about this intermittent fasting thing, you know, um, just cut back on the alcohol. Um, if there are certain occasions and you are going to be having a, a glass or two, you know, just plan it in. You know, if it's going to be wines, try and stick to the red wines. You know, if you're going to do sp uh, any spirits, you know, do, do it with your sparkling water, etc. In a long glass, stay hydrated, okay? Stay hydrated. Okay, point number four, stay hydrated. Okay, so often um, people mistake their, uh, their um, thirst for hunger. So how many times have you walked into the, well, you're actually thirsty, you walk into the kitchen and suddenly you're eating food, but really what you should be doing is having a glass of water. So you know what, just to rule out a thirst, just when you feel the urge to, you know, have something to eat, have a glass of water instead, because it's, there's a very, very strong chance that your body is just confused and it needs a glass of water. Do you know, do you know what I do? Okay, so I recommend you do this as well. I can see it right here. This is what reminded me. I have a glass near the, the basin in the kitchen. In the bathroom near the basin, there's a glass there as well. So I'm constantly just rotating wherever my workspace is in my office. There's a glass there as well. So wherever my workspace is, I'm constantly, constantly just having glasses um, so I can just support it. I'm struggling at the moment, guys. It's cold. I don't really want to like be drinking cold water. So that's why I keep my little thermos here. I keep topping it up with a bit of coffee. Black coffee because we'll get to that in a second. But it's cool um, just to have your black coffee. Um, and I put it in the thermos just so that it can keep warm and I can just and it lasts you for hours. And I'm not drinking in too much coffee and bouncing off the ceiling, but I am getting that nice little sensation of having a bit of coffee. Okay, so point number five. Okay, replace electrolytes and eat salt. 
Okay, so with fast, you lose your electrolytes. So what I tend to do with this, this is a very, very important point, guys. Um, you've got to get your minerals in. You have to have to get your minerals in. What I do um, when I got to America, I had to figure out what am I going to do? Which range of products am I going to take? Because I'm super fussy. I only like to take products that I can totally trust. And because I had decided to become a very serious pastor, um, I decided that I needed to have a supplement just, and I don't need meat either, you know. So, you know, I'm really needing to really be very conscious about what I put into my body. And so I then, after a lot of research, I found Live God and I love these guys. Their range is just to the point. There's so much information on the internet. They've got YouTube channels, they're teaching channel as well. And I absolutely love dealing and working with companies that are open and honest about what their products are and what is inside their products. And these guys I trust. So guys, if you're serious about your intermittent fasting, you know, make sure that you've got a good, reliable magnesium because you're going to need a really good product like this to make sure you keep those minerals coming. What I do um, when I got to America, I had to figure out what am I going to do, which range of products am I going to take because I'm super fussy. I only like to take products that I can totally trust. And because I had decided to become a very serious faster, um, I decided that I needed to have a supplement just, and I don't need meat either, you know, so, you know, I'm really needing to really be very conscious about what I put into my body. And so I then, after a lot of research, I found Live God and I love these guys. Their range is just to the point. There's so much information on the internet. They've got YouTube channels, they're teaching channel as well. And I absolutely love dealing and working with companies that are open and honest about what their products are and what is inside their products. And these guys I trust. So guys, if you're serious about your intermittent fasting, you know, make sure that you've got a good, reliable magnesium because you're going to need a really good product like this to make sure you keep those minerals coming. So another thing I do as well, my Himalayan salt, if I'm really struggling, I just take a little dab of it, put it on my tongue. And normally that will also just sort things out. Okay, point number six. Da da! I mentioned the coffee. Guys, it really, coffee, black coffee, and black tea are two things that you can drink when you are busy fasting. No sugars, no um, artificial sweeteners, no honey, no lemon juice, nothing like that. Sometimes what I do is I just put in a bit of mint. That definitely does help you know, with the tea and that kind of thing. I just make sure that everything that you put into your body while you're fasting does not have a macronutrient. Okay, so what you need to do for point number seven, and that is distract yourself. Guys, it's like, it's, 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 the best thing to distract yourself with is a YouTube clip. I love YouTube clips because especially the ones that are about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, because it's just long enough to, you know, get you <laughs> to be distracted and short enough, you know, just to not take up too much time. But my, what I highly, highly, highly recommend is we'll go for a walk. Go for a walk, guys. Like, I always say just walk to the, the box and back. Um, but, you know, it, once you start walking, five minutes becomes 10, 10 becomes 20, and who knows what happens after that. But distract yourself, you know. Maybe read a couple of pages of your book. Do something. Go into your garden. Pick a, you know, pick your herbs. Do whatever. You know, Jim and I play backgammon. I freaking love backgammon. And so what we do as well is sometimes just pull out the backgammon and I just say, okay, let's got an hour before we eat. Let's have a game, you know, and we have a game of backgammon. And before you know, like you roll the dice and da da, it's over. You know, the game's over. It's time to eat. You've had a bit of fun and you've completely forgotten about this fake hunger pang <laughs> that you probably have. So, yeah, I think the one big takeaway for me is around intermittent fasting is that you just need to get started. You just need to get going. Just get cracking, guys. You know, and start. Simplify it, you know. Everyone talks about 16.8, but maybe your one is going to be 6.18, you know. So, which means you start eating at 10 in the morning and you finish at 8 at night. Um, so, I hope I got that right. <laughs> 
me. I'm always just guessing my maths and most of the time it's wrong. But guys, seriously, you know, honestly, intermittent fasting is this one tool. Once you've mastered intermittent fasting, your body will be naturally detoxing. Your weight will just naturally be falling in line with what your body naturally needs to do. Um, you'll be a lot more conscious about your nutrients as well. So I think with intermittent fasting, you'll also be more conscious about what you're eating um, because you're going to want your body to, you know, be performing and you're going to want to set it up to succeed. So make sure that you, you know, you're getting all the right nutrients in. And, you know, before you know it, your body is going to be telling you what is the right time. Um, I had someone the other day who said to me, Colleen, look, I just cannot get to 11 o'clock and finish eating at 7 o'clock at night. What they preferred to do was to start at 8 o'clock in the morning and perhaps finish like early, you know, late afternoon. So, you know, you will find what works for you. In fact, I actually even had someone the other day who said they wanted to have a snack at um, a certain time late at night if they were working late hours. So, depending on what your lifestyle is, make it work for you. Intermittent fasting is, is all about your journey. It's about your times and it's about what works for you. But let me tell you, once you've got into intermittent fasting, the fuss around food becomes less and less. It is so amazing just to wake up in the mornings and just know that I don't even have to think about food for the entire day, you know, because everything is planned and prepped for. I've got my hours. I know what I'm doing. And the last, the only thing I'm thinking about where food is concerned is how delicious can I make it? What am I going to eat tonight? And my focus is all about embracing food. In fact, I had this news resolution. The only news resolution was to try and eat as much delicious nutritious food as I possibly can this year. That is my news resolution. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, I really, really please encourage you to push the subscribe button. All that means is now you're a subscriber on my channel and every time a video comes out, you'll get a notification and you will then be notified that I have put out a video and hopefully you enjoy these videos and I'm here teaching you how to eat right for life, how to eat food that you can trust. And I really and truly hope that you guys are going to have an incredible 2024 and all these lovely goals that you're setting for yourself. I, I really and truly hope that everything comes true. But I'm here for you. If you need any advice on nutrition or nutrition tips, I'm here. And if anyone is interested in a complimentary assessment, please just hop onto my website. There's an assessment tab there. Um, you'll be able to download the assessment, fill in the information, email it back to me. It all gets done on my website and I will be in touch and we can set up a complimentary a consultation and perhaps I can help you just point in the right direction and get you going. But guys, thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. Ciao, ciao.